Hey, this is Evans at Motorcycle.com, and Tom Roderick and I are here in wonderful Oatman, Arizona, walking smack dab the, down the middle of Route 66 on two of the American gunslingers of the modern age. We've got the Harley Davidson Road Glide 2020 model with the 114 cubic inch engine, and we've got the new kit on the block, the Indian Challenger, complete with its liquid cooled 108 cubic inch engine. And we've got a, a donkey in the middle of the road, a burrow. Maybe he'll say something. Hello Speak, donkey. There. Speak. Here. Here. Come on. Into the Hi. mic. In the mic. Hello. Here. It's not going to happen. Dude, you're on camera, pal. This is your moment. We are doing what you should do with these bikes. We're hitting the road, riding down Highway 66, and having lots of fun. What do you think about the bike so far, Tom? Well, we've done enough mileage at this point getting to Oatman that I think we've formed some pretty credible opinions about these two motorcycles. No one's going to come out of this dead, but we are going to have a winner and a loser for sure. I think so. So what we're going to do is we are going to have a modern day gunfight with these two gunslinger motorcycles. I can't think of a better thing to be doing in this time of year than riding a couple of these baggers here in western Arizona. The biggest feature about the Indian Challenger has got to be the engine. What do you think about the comparison between the, the new kid and the old guard? Um, it's, I guess, funny you should ask it that way, Evans. And uh, you know, I think in the columns underneath this, you're going to see the no duh Tom comment over and over again. But <laughs> the Harley, it, it feels like a motorcycle that has been upgraded over its decades of existence. And the Indian feels like a clean slate motorcycle that was produced to bring competition to the Harley, but in a more modern fashion. And we'll get into the details, I guess, as we stumble through this yeah, yeah. review. But no, I, I, I agree with you completely. The Harley is your classic Harley performance. Yeah, it's 114 cubic inches, so it, it's the biggest you can get in a non-CBO, you know, off the rack. But despite having the larger displacement, when it comes to roll on power, say on the, the freeway, we did side by side, top gear, 55 miles per hour yesterday, and the Indian just walks away from the Harley. And as it gets up in the RPM range, it, it just it, it accelerates even more so. And I think that that um, calls out the different ways in which these two bikes can be ridden. Both of them have a lot of bottom end torque, but the Indian likes to rev out. And so if you come from a more sporting motorcycle and you're used to spinning a bike up into the higher RPM, you're going to get a lot more out of it. There's something to be said about the characteristics of the two engines and the way they go about their business. You're right, the, when, I, when I jumped on the Indian, I immediately noticed that it's a more busy engine. Even though the Harley is a shorter stroke engine, he travels normally about 500 RPM lower, depending on your gear. And I did appreciate those characteristics in the Harley in that you get on it and the engine's not present. You hear the, the twin sound, you feel it you know, vibrating a little bit, but it just kind of goes about its business, where the Indian is a little bit more like, hey, I'm working really hard for you. Yeah, I think you're right. I, I think that someone that comes from the V-twin world would probably be more comfortable on the Harley just because it has that traditional feel, where somebody that's coming from a multi-cylinder bike 
might not be bothered by, by that a little bit more frenetic nature of the motor. And they would be more used to ringing the engine out to the upper RPM range when they want, really wanted to accelerate. And it's one of those things we experienced because we're riding them back to back. Yeah, If you exactly. bought this bike or had this bike or just bought this one and rode it, you wouldn't really know the difference no, too much. No, not at two. all. And you'd be happy with the performance of the engine or the way yep. it, uh, it acts. Um, but yeah, I mean, having the chance to ride them back to back, I did just like the way the Harley operates in the background a little bit more over the engine. But when it came to power and performance, yep. especially in the twisties, you know, the Indian gets the, the thumbs up. Yeah, you know, me, um, I, I like the Indian all around. It's got the uh, the low end torque to, to, you know, especially on this tight winding road with first and second gear corners, to really lug the engine down and pull out of the corners. Um, but I like being able to rev an engine out. There's something about spinning it up higher than just saying 5,000 RPMs. So I'm in favor of the Indian in that regard. But you know, th there's some other places where, where I think the Indian um, really set out to challenge the Harley also, like in the suspension department. Well, I don't think it challenged it. I think it definitely beat it in the suspension <laughs> department. That, that, that was kind of a soft <laughs> lob to you. Like that. <laughs> yeah, the, in this instance, the Indian is more than a challenger. It, it dominates the Harley. Even though the Harley has a, a nifty, uh, easily adjustable um, preload, the Indian suspension, because it has additional travel, and it looks like they put a little more money into it. Well, it has the, in, the inverted front fork as The well. inverted front fork, yeah. The Indian suspension just feels more balanced, whereas the Harley's shock feels a little stiffer all around and a little more abrupt at all times. The Indian, it feels plush and firm at the same time. It's able to absorb the harsh hits, but it, it keeps the chassis stable. And when you're going over bumps, the front and rear end react consistently together, whereas with the Harley, um, they seem to be independent of each other and not in a good way. Yeah, I don't think the Harley suspension engineers came out here to Route 66 and rode it over roads like this. They <laughs> might have had something a little smoother yeah. to test it on, yeah. where the Indian guys seem to put in a little bit more effort on balancing their suspension. Yeah, I was thinking last night on, on the highway section as we were rolling into Laughlin, that yeah, you know, this rear suspension on the Harley isn't that bad, but then I thought, oh yeah, the road is super smooth. This is, this is you know, pristine interstate pavement. Then we got on this road again today, and I was reminded of, 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 of the harshness. One place where you'd think that they would be almost identical is in the brakes. Both bikes have 320 millimeter discs. Both bikes have calipers manufactured by Brembo, although the Indian says Brembo, which gives you a little street cred. Both bikes have ABS. Both have IMUs so that the ABS can be tuned towards uh, lean angle, acceleration, all that type of stuff. It's, it's, and it's really good to see sport bike technology trickle down to cruisers. And there really are some valid applications for it. It's not just for you know, riding super quick. And you're wondering, why would they do that? Well, you know, traction is limited in wet weather and stuff like that. And you can encounter stuff like that on a mountain road, come around a corner and uh, find water running across the road or something like that. And so this is really interesting to see them applying this high technology. You oh, want to say something? No, I, I thought about it out here because on this stretch of road you have a lot of tourists and they're not all, not all of them are on two wheels. Some of them are four and I've been watching here as we're sitting up cameras. Some of them are double, going over the double yellows into this blind left hand corner and as a motorcyclist coming through, again, if you're kind of keeled over and you've got lean yep. sense of ABS, I mean, you can just wind on those you, brakes. You can, you can be a lot more aggressive. Yeah. Yes, so I was thinking about that on the ride up. I'm like, that's a really cool technology. Again, it just mm -hmm. a handful of years ago, it was cutting edge on sport bikes, but here we have it on a couple of baggers. And I think, yep. you know, the that's evolution really of the motorcycle, that's fantastic. Good old Bosch IMU. For people that say Indian wasn't looking at the Harley Road Glide, when they built the Challenger, I point to the fairings on both of them. They both have shark you know, type fairings with gills on either side of the headlight. It's a very similar shape. You know, they're both frame mounted. They, I mean, they clearly had their target set on the road glide. And that's because it sells really well. Baggers sell really well in the American V-Twin market. I think it's smart that Indian uh, went with the Challenger as a, as a bagger as opposed to full dress tour. Um, because I, I think that that's more where the market is right now. And they've really done some things to directly address, maybe not shortcomings of the um, road glide, but more th just things that it doesn't offer, like the adjustable windscreen. Electronic adjustable windscreen. You know, you're always a little bit leery of gimmicky technology, and I was. 
Um, but I started on the Harley. We swapped, got on the Indian, and sure enough, you bring this up, the little bit of adjustment that it has, a few inches, and it creates this nice little pocket. Uh, it calms down the wind noise. It allows the stereo to come through better. So out on the, the higher freeway speeds, I mean, it's a blessing. And yeah. then you get into some small little town like Oatman here, where it's 80 degrees, you bring it down, let the wind flow come through. I mean, superb. The Harleys does fine in a general application, yeah. but without it, I mean, it has the little kind of vent up here that helps, you know, with the It the helps flow. a little with the buffeting it and does. you can close it at night when the temperatures drop. Yep. Yeah. But it's nothing in comparison because we're talking basically the same price range here. So for the same price of motorcycle, this technology is, I mean, worth yeah. its, what, $400 more? I yeah. Think? Yeah, that, Tom's got a good point. Both of these bikes are $28,000. The Harley is twenty-eight five, and the Indian is twenty-eight eight. And so that's you know, really a small difference in them. But what you get for your additional $300 is you get the adjustable windscreen, a superior suspension. I think we both believe the stereo is a little bit better. It goes to 11. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say, I prefer the uh, view screen on the Harley's uh, infotainment system, but the layout and the information that the Indian one provides um, is, is much, much more detailed. I was going to say, I might disagree with you there. I really, I'm not sure about the layout. I like the Indian. I mean, it's got a bunch of superfluous information though too, yeah. that kind of like if you're bored on a desert highway in the middle of the night, you can see the elevation you've been to and stuff like that and kind of flip through the little different, you know, screens that it has. Uh, but I do like the, um, the interface better as far as yeah. working the controls or if you have to reach over and touch the screen or something like that. It was a little bit more intuitive than the Harley. I got up to speed on it yeah. better. And then just little functions like if your music's blasting and you come to a stop, you can pause it really yep. quick. I could not find that operation on the Harley. You have to kind of basically, you know, decrease the volume the whole way. So, and there were other, you know, specific. If that is available, it's not easy to find right. you know, off the rack. But yeah. then I could not find my playlist through the Indian interface. Harley, no problem. Couple this was switches. driving Tom crazy for the better part of an hour. Every time we stopped, he said, like, I can't find my playlist. I could find songs, artists, and albums, but I couldn't find a playlist. So yeah, a little bit frustrating. Another premium feature that the Indian has is the um, electronically locking bags, which is kind of nice. The, the Harley, you have to use the key. Let's talk about long distance riding because you know, we spent the full day in the saddle yesterday and we've got, we've got at least a four and a half hour ride home tonight when we're done shooting photos and video. I found the Indian seat, not only was it roomier, but it was more comfortable and at the same time offered better back support. Whereas the Harley seat, if you have the right shape bucket, for the bucket seat that the Harley offers, I'm sure it'll be awesome. But for me, I got a little uncomfortable after an hour or so. Yeah, I agree there. I like the seat, yeah. Especially after a few hours, that lower yeah. back support really kind of came in handy. And uh, the, the bars though, the bend of bars on the Harley is just a little bit more natural fitting I agree. for I this agree. type of motorcycle. They both, I mean, the Indians has a big drawback bar. It's a big tiller type of right. bar. Right. But the more buckhorn design of the Harley is just a little bit more, you know, comfortable for yeah. a bagger. I, I, I agree with that. So which is the best? I'm, I'm going to weasel for a minute and then we're going to get into to our opinions. First, as Tom said earlier, if you're just riding either one of these, you're really going to like it. They're both really nice, really well-made bikes. The Harley has, has refined this bike to um, a high sheen and it's, it's really impressive and I would not hesitate to jump on a several day trip on the road glide. Um, the same, same with the Indian, it's, it's a different riding experience, um, but it's comfortable, it's sporty, you can do all kinds of stuff with it. That said, if I had to choose between these two bikes, and that's my job, um, I'm gonna go with the Indian. And the reason I'm gonna go with the Indian is engine performance, that is really important to me. I like the higher RPM. I like the adjustability of the windscreen so I can tune the airflow over my body. I like the interface for long travel and, and using the GPS, although I will say the Harley was the only GPS that wasn't sending us on a 13 mile dirt road to get here today. <laughs> so uh, that, that's just a quick aside. I really, I, I, but back to the Indian, that, that would be my choice. Uh, and I've been having a lot of fun and I'm glad I've got my stuff packed on it because at the end of the day, that means that's what I'm riding home. Tom, how about you? So uh, the electronic windscreen and the suspension out of the box the way they two are would probably compel me to purchase the Indian 
over the Harley. But if you are more of a Harley aficionado, for the $400 price difference, you could probably upgrade the suspension on the Harley and it would be, you know, comparable to the Indian. That leaves, you know, a windscreen and a little bit of the interface on the uh, electronics. And that's, you know, kind of here or there. And subjectively, I mean, when we came out, I'm probably still a little bit more attracted to the look of the Harley. The Indian grew on me after, you know, the couple of days. You know, a little bit more classic Harley, a little bit more modern interpretation, yes. kind of like yeah. just the bike in general. So Yeah, the Indian is a modern interpretation of the road glide. Yeah. The Challenger, it, it, that's what it seems like. And that's not the fault of it. That's to say imitation is the sin sincerest form of flattery. And they got to look at what makes it tick, like a racer following his, his uh, adversary for a few laps and finding out where he's strong and weak and making the move. I think Indian has made the move on the Harley and it's going to be interesting about it. Once again, as always, for the full story, go to Motorcycle.com, read the text, look at the pictures. Um, we've got full specs there. Um, you'll get the, all the information that we have to offer. If you like this video, click like. If you didn't like it, tell us why, and we will try harder. <music>